The cannabis industry can be very scary and exciting at the same time, but you're not alone. Join the community and understand all the different influential people and ancillary providers who can help you scale and grow your audience and your business. I'm your host, Kamin Tharath. Let's dive into the Cannabis Business Development Podcast. Hey, Dr. Kaplan, welcome back. We have a special guest today, I think around a, a topic that a lot of people are going through one way or another, if it's around arthritis, chronic pain, insomnia, and also we have an extra bonus for our listeners today around growing cannabis yourself. So we're welcoming Paul today, but yeah, welcome back, Dr. Kaplan. Thanks a lot. No, it's a privilege to be here and, and a real honor to have Paul. I think one of the things that's inspirational is when people come from a struggle find something that helps them, and then really embrace it, literally making it their own. And I think that's a story that is really wonderful for everybody to hear. And Paul, it's a privilege. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Would you mind telling us about you? How has your struggle been? What does that look like for you throughout the years? Well, I'll be honest with you. I haven't touched cannabis since I was a teenager, basically. I was afraid of it. Honestly, I was afraid of it. But since I have been doing cannabis, I am such a fan. I don't touch opioids anymore. I, I am strictly cannabis and I love it. It, it. It's helped me so much. It's awesome. Wow. That's really, it's dramatic. Can you tell me a little bit of detail about your experience before? How were you managing your pain before cannabis? I wasn't. I wasn't, nobody ever offered me any pain pills or anything. I was just struggling to deal with it. And it was a struggle. Paul, can you give us a little bit more like details around the pain? Like what type of pain was it? Well, way back when, four years ago, I got injured at work and I have what they call Morton's neuroma, which is nerve damage in my foot. And it's really tough. I only get about an hour and a half, two hours on my foot before the pain sets in. So, which makes my day, used to make my day very, very long. Right now, it's not that bad. I can definitely tolerate this. What kinds of things had you thought about cannabis when you were a teenager? And then sort of how did cannabis come back into your experience as an adult? I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And almost every one of them enjoy their cannabis. So, one of my nephews asked me if I wanted to try it. Absolutely, I wanted to try it. If it was going to help with pain, I'm on it. And I'll tell you, it did. And by meeting you, I am thrilled with the way things are working out. Great. I, I wish I could take credit, but honestly, Paul, it's been all of your doing. And, and I'm really proud of you for taking the leap because not everybody is comfortable yet. You know, understanding cannabis is safe and not threatening. Can you take a moment and Tell us kind of about any concerns that you've had, any bad experiences with cannabis, anything that interrupted your daily life in a bad way. Not with cannabis. I, I have not had a bad experience. And I've learned if I get too high, I can do the CBD gummies and bring me back to a, a happy spot. But I haven't had that problem at all. I mean, this, is, uh, this is awesome for me. I'm glad to hear it. It's one thing for me to be shouting it off mountaintops. It's another for people to hear a, a real life story and your personal experience. So that's really meaningful. Give me um, a mountaintop. I'll shout it out. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about your daily medication regimen? What does that look like for you? I'll be honest with you. I don't have a, besides before going to bed, because I use it to get a good night's sleep. If I know I'm not going anywhere during the day, I will eat my edibles and I have a great day. And the pain level, I can take my dog for a walk two, three, four times a day, and I'm not really in any much pain. It's a great experience. And I really think a lot of people need to give this a shot before you down it. Hmm. So that happened, I actually want to ask this question as people are hearing Paul talk, right? They're like, okay, this sounds great, but why does it work? So, you know, can you give us some of the science behind it, like how this works as an alternative? Sure. So there's understanding physiologically about cannabis. There's also understanding it from the real meat and potatoes, meaning Paul. You know, Paul's experience is that it is working. And you usually, and Paul, correct me if I'm wrong here, usually it works 
both locally, you feel less discomfort where it was hurting before, but also the attitude about the cannabis is different. You're dialing the volume down on the discomfort. You're less bothered by pain day in and day out. Um, does that sound right to you, Paul? Absolutely. Yes. Nailed it right on the head. And I'm telling you, as a client, as a cannabis hater, oh, no, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Wonderful. Yeah. So physiologically, what's happening is the nerves where the pain is derived from. So maybe there's a cut somewhere. Maybe there's an extra growth that's pushing on tissues and that's causing some pressure pain. Some people have nerve pain that feels like pins and needles and hot temperature. All of these kinds of nerve pain send signals and those signals travel from where it hurts up your spine into your brain. And then as the days go by, as the months and years go by, you know, someone who's experiencing pain day in and day out, this is agonizing. You feel like it's never going to end. Your identity becomes someone who's in pain. I'm just someone who can't bring groceries to the car, or I just can't sit still comfortably. And this becomes a sort of an emotional layer, which is just horrible. I mean, imagine suffering day in and day out, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, things you try don't work. You go to your doctor and they say, here's another pill, or here's a higher dose. And no, that's not cutting it, or that's giving you constipation and, and other, other issues. So it's a continuous story that we hear in modern American medicine where pain is not being addressed well. And the way cannabis works at those local pain receptors is pretty simple, actually. The cannabinoids act at channels, literally on the nerves, and impacts how strongly the nerve is carrying a signal forward. You can think about it almost like, actually, like I was referring before, sort of dialing the volume down on the electrical signal that's coming from that area. That's one way that they work. There are a few ways that cannabinoids work. Um, that's one way it works on nerves. Another way is when there is irritation, the body sends out an alarm. Something is not right here. Everybody in the body's army, come fix it. And that's what we call inflammation. So the alarm system is attracting these other characters, these fix it molecules in our body to flood the area and make a problem better. The cannabinoids, basically act like a mute agent. They turn that inflammation down. They fight against that inflammation to reduce it. Um, so people who have swelling locally, who have an alarm system that's trying to fix something, that gets calmed down. So people feel less pain locally. And then I was mentioning also this systemic sort of experience. Cannabinoids touch parts of our brain called mu opioid receptors, the same receptors actually that opiate medicines touch, but in a very soft, gentle way. So not overwhelming someone, not making them high like opiates would, but it touches it subtly that people feel pleasant. You know, when you've had a beautiful day, when you're watching a wonderful movie and you feel joy from that movie, or you read a beautiful book and you get really into it, that's how it feels to touch those mu opioid receptors. So imagine someone who's in pain day in and day out, they can have a little bit of vacation. They're not feeling that pain like an alarm bell ringing constantly. I mean, that's just pure joy for these people. I mean, as you can yeah. see, Right in front of us. Oh. <laughs> Everyone has different pain levels, but also a different biology, right? So I know like, you know, you have to try different types of cannabis. So how do you know, or how do you advise Dr. Kaplan to turn it up or turn it down? Mm -hmm. You know, and well, can, it be, can it be very exact and really like direct and pinpointed? Or is it really like a trial and error? Trial and error is a harsh, when we think about the words trial and error, as random, you know, like, I don't know what's gonna work. Maybe this will work, maybe that'll work. It's not like that. All of cannabinoids have some overlapping features that in common. Um, most of them are anti-inflammatory. So they're all gonna help with reducing pain. They're all gonna help with reducing the body's alarm system. To pick one product from another is really a matter of the nuance of how that product feels to you. Some products have a lot of THC in them and that brings people a little bit more pleasure signals than they might want. It might be distracting during the day. Maybe it stops someone from feeling comfortable driving. And maybe someone who's working day in and day out doesn't want that. They want something which is not going to make them feel abnormal. And there are products which have high CBD, and that's where those are appropriate. Paul, what was your experience like? Which products did you find yourself I, drawn to? When I first started going to the dispensaries, my very first time I tried, I bought uh, a sativa and an indica pre-rolled. 
I found a sativa during the day actually is great. At night, when I'm sitting around with the wife and we're just watching TV or I'm laying in bed, the Indica is so much better. And the Indica at night to get rid of my pain and give me a great night's sleep is awesome. Hmm. Tell me a little bit more about the Indica experience. And then, of course, tell me a little bit more about the, the Sativa experience. Well, the Indica experience, I mean, I'm a homebody anyway. I like to lay down at night early and watch TV. I've actually found myself falling asleep and waking up an hour later going, wow, that was awesome. So that's usually the only time I'll do Indica is at night. Mm-hmm. But that's me. Sativa, I will do all day long. I'm okay with that. I'm wide you know, awake. I've still got all my faculties, which is a lot better than the Vicodins and beers I was doing when I had my hips done. Yeah, no, I'm totally okay with Sativa and the Indica, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I really like the Indica at night. If you were able to compare the medicines you were taking for the discomfort before and then the cannabis for the discomfort now, what does that difference look like? Oh, a huge difference. I mean, I was addicted to, to Vicodins. I've had both hips replaced. I've had surgeries left and right. I was addicted to Vicodins, pretty bad, where I'd be taking four or five Vicodins and drinking eight, nine beers. I wouldn't know which end was up. And now where I'm just getting the cannabis and I still drink my beer, I'm functional. I'm totally functional all day long, all night long. It's awesome. And my pain level has dropped from... A seven, probably down to a three. I mean, that's awesome for me. This is incredible. Paul, I want to ask you, when you started to look into the dispensaries, right? For for other dispensaries who are listening, what would be like a recommendation to help someone like yourself going in for the first time? Like, what do you feel like education, signage, maybe grouping things to make people understand things better? You know, because you probably had to learn the difference between sativa and dicka. So like what recommendations do you think would be helpful for folks who are going to a dispensary Honestly, for the first time? I have never knew there was a difference in indica or sativa. I never knew any difference. Okay. The doctor's paperwork that he gave me and he, the doctor explained to me the difference. But when I walked into the first dispensary, oh, I can't remember which one it was, but anyway, they explained everything to me and asked me exactly what I was there for. And in my case, it was pain. I wasn't just out to get high because I wanted to. And they explained every single thing to me, which is why I do what I do now. And at some point, Paul, you had enjoyed purchasing from the dispensaries, but what was the transition for you to think, maybe I could grow this? I'm out on workers' comp, okay? And it just got too expensive. I mean, every dispensary, I mean, they got to pay the state their money. It just got too expensive. I was there twice a week. And it's like, nah, I can't afford to do this. I just can't. Mm-hmm. And, and what did that, what, what was the process for you to learn about growing? Was it intimidating? I did, I did a lot of research online and I found many different sites and i have a few in my computer that i keep to myself that explain to me how to start growing how to do my lighting how to do my soil i mean i've learned so much on this it's awesome great and now i do my own here and what was the expense for you to to put in and, and be able to grow at home well i locked out uh, a friend of mine gave me the grow lights I bought a grow tent. So let me see the expense. I'm probably talking maybe $150 to start off with. And then I buy enough seeds that I can transition season to season. And that's only going to be $100 a year. And I can get up to... Well, the state allows me 12 plants, so that's a, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot, let me tell you. For what I do, that's a lot. I only grow five at a time. 
what's the time commitment, Paul, to manage this? Six months from start to harvest. I'll start to finish, I should say. But during the day, like, you know, it, it, is it something doable for people who are working a lot versus, you know, because I know that you're retired. So just curious. If- when I start my plants, like I, I've got them growing now, little seedlings, it takes approximately seven to 12 to 13 days. I grow mine in soil. I don't grow them in a napkin, in a wet paper towel. I grow them in the soil. So it takes me approximately 13 days. Once that's done, you don't have to touch them all day long. Just put them in soil, water them every single day, and let them be. Once they're in the grow tent, yeah, I keep an eye on them every day. I just check the soil. Other than that, let them alone. They're good to go. Has there been any downside to growing at home? Any smell that you didn't like? Any, uh... <laughs> Yeah, well, when I first started growing, I grew them in this room that I'm in. And yeah, my wife did not like that. The house reeked of it. So I bought a charcoal filter. And now it's in one of my spare bedrooms upstairs. And we don't smell anything. Nothing. Good for you. It sounds like you're taking a smart approach. You're, you're starting with a passion. You're figuring out how to do the next best step. And eventually, it's working out pretty well for you. Oh, it's working out great. And like I said... The most expense to me is buying the seeds. You already have potting soil. Everybody's got soil. The most expense is buying seeds. So if you're putting in, say, a couple hundred dollars a year, how much do you think you're saving overall? Oh, oh, I mean, come on. A a pre-roll at a dispensary is $10. I've got jars in my cabinet filled with buds that I grew last year i could get probably 15 20 pre-rolls out of that easily out of my one five dollar seed uh, come on this is a no-brainer everybody's got to grow their own yeah agreed and I, and, and I think one of the things i've heard and tell me if this rings true for you too paul is that there's a part of growing of tending to something watching something grow sharing love with the plant which is also kind of therapeutic Absolutely it is. Because, you know, when you're growing the plant, you've only got this little tiny thing that needs you to take care of it, to make it get to four feet, five feet, 17 feet tall. But you've got to prune it. You've got to bend it. You've got to move it around just so when the light, i.e. sunlight hits it, you get more buds and they're more healthy buds. If somebody's got time and you don't need that much, to put into growing your own, do it, do it. It's so satisfying. Yeah, a lot of people out there feel somewhat a slave to the pharmaceutical industry to get their medicine. You know, they have to go to CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens to get their medicine. And here you are kind of doing it the old fashioned way, making your own. I can go right in my backyard and get mine, Well, not today, but I can go out there and my backyard and get my own. It's awesome. Paul, are there any opportunities or do you still go to the dispensaries for anything else besides what you're growing now? No, I, I haven't been to a dispensary since I started growing. I have no reason to. I make my own edibles. I have my own weed because I'm growing it. I have no reason to go to a dispensary. I know, awesome. sorry, dispensaries, but. That's okay. Part of the American way is doing it yourself. And the dispensaries have a chance to fight for themselves and, and help patients. There are a lot of patients who don't have the opportunity to grow. Right. But for those who do, it's nice to be able to. Oh, I have a nephew that is a district manager for a dispensary. Yeah, he'd rather see me go to a dispensary, but not going to happen. Fair enough. I wanted to hear your thoughts about sleep, your quality of sleep now that you're consuming cannabis versus back before you were consuming cannabis. I get a good solid five hours at my age. I have to get up and go to the bathroom. But other than that, I guarantee I'd get a good eight hours sleep. And does it feel like quality sleep? Oh, absolutely. I'm well rested when I get up. Well rested. It's not like drinking a beer and waking up with a hangover. There isn't one. And Paul, if it's not too personal for me, is the nighttime and the wife as happy as she used to be in the past? Yeah, if not happier. Fair enough. We can leave it there. 
It's all the win win win. I really don't want to go any deeper. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, Paul, like if folks are kind of on the fence, right? They've been doing the research and they're on the fence. What type of advice would you give them? you got to give it a shot, honestly. And if you can grow your own, do it. If you're really nervous about trying cannabis, you know, go to the, to the dispensary, go home, do it on a Saturday morning or a Saturday night, buy yourself with your loved ones, what have you, and try it. It's an experience you won't forget that you're really going to love. Right. Well, period. Full stop. I love it, Paul. Thank you so much. It's really, it's an honor to hear your voice. And I, I think it rings true for so many, so many millions of other people. And I think, and I hope most people will find it inspiring as, as I do. I hope they do. Cause I'm telling you, I was totally dead set against cannabis. I mean, I did it when I was a teen. I'm 60 years old now. Let me tell you, there's a lot of years in there. And I am so for cannabis, it's not even funny right now. I love it. It's awesome. And I'm not in pain. This is an awesome story. Paul, if, if folks had any follow-up questions, kind of really you know, have specific questions to understand like how you're growing or what you went through, like what's the best way for them to reach out to you? They can email me uh, at dudleypaul7 at gmail.com. I'll give it my best shot to answer somebody back, but I mean, I don't want to be inundated with emails. I got enough crap going on through my email. <laughs> no problem. It will keep it filtered for you. Thank you so much, Paul, for spending the time and sharing your story. It's really a miracle to have you, and I hope everybody gets to hear you. Doc, it's a pleasure meeting you, and I'm telling you, I've got to get you some of these camels. You're going to love them. Sounds good. Do you want to show everybody the creation you've made? This is just one tray I've made. Wow. Okay. And as you can see, there's a couple gone. A friend of mine gives me molds and that's how I make my own. It takes 40 minutes. It's awesome. And I've got enough edibles there for eh, another month. Wonderful. Let me guess. You researched that too and you did it all on your own. Oh yeah. I learned how to make my own butter. You got to start off with good weed and good butter. <laughs> But oh yeah, I learned everything on my own. I had zero help from anybody on learning how to do this. And if I can do it, anybody can do it. So you're yeah, definitely an inspiration to a lot of people. And I love your energy and enthusiasm. And hopefully, you know, folks are, are seeing and watching you. It helps give them some confidence to the, your point, right? Give it a try. Hey, listen, I haven't even figured out how to make oils yet, but that's my next plan. I've already figured out caramels and chocolate. I'm working on oil next. Sounds great. Awesome. Thanks so much, Paul. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. You too. Stay safe. Thanks for spending your time with us. This podcast is for you. And if you have any topics you'd like to learn more about or suggestions, please email us at podcast at indicativemarketing.com. And don't be a stranger. Connect with me on LinkedIn.